back in town, she just said something yeah, else. Yeah, she was sworn in this afternoon. Sworn in this afternoon? Yep, as a city council. Oh, and then flew out this afternoon? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we will begin our um, Human Rights Commission meeting with, um, do you want to do the roll call, Josh? Yes. Nate Ogard? Here. Connie Adden? Sarah Watson Curry? Here. Shin Warren Mayi? Mikhail Pauline Normandon? Here. Willard Yellowbird? Here. That next item on the agenda is approval of um, agenda, agenda and the minutes. So if everybody wants to review, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that or not. We have a motion to um, approve the Human Rights Commission agenda and minutes for, um, was it December 19th of 2018? I have a uh, one item on there. Okay. On the road call, I was marked as absent. Oh, no, you weren't absent, were you? No. <laughs> I will get that corrected. I just made a second so I couldn't sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't be absent no no that's okay I'll so. move to approve with Willard's correction I'll second the minutes all those in favor aye 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 opposed okay we will approve the minutes um, with the amendment to <laughs> to Willard's presence of the the City of Moorhead Human Rights Commission meeting um, minutes for December 19th, 2018. I think we're, did we just prove the minutes right. technically? Yep. So. so do we, does anybody have any? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as written. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed? The minutes for the human rights um, meeting agenda, or the agenda, is um, for January 16, 2019, is approved. Next item on the agenda is citizens to be heard. I don't see any. So we can move on to the annual work plan, plan development. Um, I included in the packet the 2018 annual work plan, uh, the draft of the 2018 plan. Um, from what I've been able to gather, and maybe you guys will remember, but from what I've seen, it looks like you guys spent a number of months preparing this, uh, but then it never was approved. It kind of, I think, dropped off the radar. Oh. <laughs> I think it did. Be, that was when Tia was here and then she had left. I think we had, like, approved it, but there was, like, a adding one more thing I don't remember what that was maybe I have a note right there there was something that we were going to be amending to it and then she left <laughs> <laughs> so let me see I'm not sure what we do from there well, I just thought maybe we might want to use this as a basis of something for 19 that would be appropriate.
feel like we talked about having more of a timeline. I think so. That sounds accurate. That that's what we were kind of thinking of adding in. So we knew what we were, where we were headed. Our right. projection for the yeah. upcoming months yep. too. If that makes sense. Well, just to reflect back on this calendar too, um, this has been our first um, year um, resuming the duties of the Human Rights Commission. So. Um, I think one of the big conversation pieces was to not be, to set ourselves up for success and not um, spread ourselves too thin. So um, I think there's still momentum to build. Um, uh, I will no longer be the council appointee. We've gotten our, our new council has gotten their board and um, commission appointments. So Deb White will be joining you at the next meeting. So she'll bring a different set of skills as well too. And we do have an open seat that's waiting to be filled too. So. Um, there will be a little bit of transition and some new eyes to look at things too. So I don't know if we want to finalize anything tonight. We should have a good discussion about it, but. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and then coming up to the um, chair and vice chair um, changes in the upcoming right. months. Um, I think it's a great foundation. Um, there were some things that I don't know if we'd have uh, line up exactly the same. Um, the fair housing seminar event, I don't know if that's something that would be duplicated. That was something that we recorded, so maybe it could be, maybe we could tie in some programming around playing that again or at least drawing some attention to, but that's certainly with the funding for this um, coming from the, the CB <laughs> community <laughs> block development grant. It's a lot of consonants. It is. Um, that's that could be an area where we maybe strengthen some of our um, our our activities as well to yeah. let people know that that is a core. That's the one we issue. partner with, right? And was yeah. that the one that was at the at the library? Library, yep. Fargo, yeah. And I think we did we help with the funding for the taping covered. Um, yep. So it was. Uh, the group, the Successful Outcomes for Tenants and Landlords Committee hosted a seminar and then uh, MCAM recorded it. Right. So it's still accessible as far as I know too. So um, that was kind of the goal too. So if people couldn't attend, they could they could still get the information. Was, did we do a proclamation? Did, was there a proclamation? I think that's uh, precisely the conversation about the timing is that we missed a deadline to get on the agenda so we retroactively had a signing or we were close to missing the deadline or something like that I feel, like I, I, feel like I went to that meeting you had laryngitis I had laryngitis <laughs> could not speak yes that was awesome um, yeah but I think we did do that yeah yep. and I went to that seminar and, and it was uh it was a full house. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a lot of people, uh, a lot of the different, uh, some clients, but lawyers, you know, HUD people, uh, um, shelters and stuff. It was, uh, it, was, it was very well attended. I think what we were lacking, I don't know, when I was, you know, the other programs had their uh, their bulletins or their you know, pamphlets of who they are and, and things like that. But as I think since we're just kind of getting back started into this, I said I, I think that um, it would be nice when we start to partner and have our own thing, to have our own, to start putting out our pamphlets. Mm -hmm you know, as the Human Rights Commission of Moorhead and so, so. We did, we had some nice pamphlets when we were at the Pride, Pride event. The Pride event. Um, so, as I recall too, um, we, it, we did have a staff changing over the last year, obviously too. Um, I think one thing that was helpful, uh, especially when we don't have everyone present, is we did some ranking as far as some of the activities um, 
Nate, do you recall? <laughs> um, I think it was emailed to us so we could kind of rank things that we thought maybe we should, uh, partnerships we could focus on um, and some of the activities as well to sort of gain a little insight too. Yeah, I think we housing a, was one for sure. Yeah. So we, yeah, so that was kind of a mechanism to get, um, which we can certainly do through discussion too, but um, to get everyone's participation prior to the meeting, that was kind of helpful to digest that and then um, kind of plug that into the calendar more or less where it makes sense. Um, I like the layout of this um, uh, work plan because it gives kind of a timeline of what other, th you know, so you can kind of tie into other things that are already happening. Um, and then categorize them as, as far as is this commission taking the lead on that? Is it uh, bringing it to um, another board or, the, or council? Um, and just some of the regular business too. So I think it's a nice structure to build on. So thanks for bringing this in again. Um, to the point of the litter, like li materials, um, I know that's one thing too, is that it's still, um, there's circles of folks who know that, that the commission exists and, and how they can be of service, but um, maybe providing some more edu education as far as what our the function is too. Well, I, I know a lot of times, you know, if we wanted <laughs> the human, the helm called uh, the helm in Fargo. A lot of times when we couldn't get the money because, as a program, well, they have money, mm -hmm. you know, the programs. But a lot of times we would also lean on the uh, the planning, economic mm. planning, and they would also help with some of their uh, their uh, budget and some of the things that we need to. And I don't know how it works over here, but uh, if you're working with the community and economic development, you know, they're might be able to uh, help with uh, mm -hmm. with some funding, you know, to help with speakers or to help that pertain to our community, you know, I think like that. So we can maybe look into that too in regards. So, or we can uh, get a budget and send it to the uh, commission. <laughs> So should I maybe look for that uh, survey that was sent out last year that you guys did between meetings and see if I can? Well, I, I think within the work plan that's kind of, yeah, the materials are in there, but um, yeah, I'd have to dig a little bit too, but that was helpful to at least narrow down. I think we had a lot of creative ideas too as far as how we wanted to engage. Um, so potentially it could be tagging something else in um, to our calendar as well. We've got a fair amount of um, public relation pieces at the latter part of the year, so maybe we want to space that out and look at um, uplifting some of the newer, or some of the other um, months per, where there's some other activities. Well, one thing about work plans, they're supposed to be sort of a fluid document, sure. so we can always change it down the road sometime. Mm -hmm one, two, uh, but I think it would be appropriate if we just adopted last year's work plan as 2019 and you know, do some surveying or mm -hmm. find out what some of the other members feel about it. Um, and I also was looking at the rules of practice. Under On page eight it says we were supposed to have a annual plan done no later than November 15th so apparently we, <laughs> we didn't notice that uh, but then the other deadline is an annual report no later than March 15th so obviously we got a couple months to do that mm. win one lose one I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I don't believe anything was submitted in 2018 no well, and we it do have obviously some things to report that are good, and uh, 
you know, being the first year of sort of getting back together, I thought we did well. Mm -hmm. We did some things, so I think that's Absolutely. <laughs> we showed up. Yeah, yeah, right. Yep. So when they, and I'm new to this whole thing, so when you submit the annual report and the plan, is that something that they take to the council, to the city council? Okay, so that so. was never done. Right. That. Yeah, okay. We should make that a goal. <laughs> and so for, you know. Put it on the work plan. Yes. <laughs> plan. Well, I mean, and I don't know if you can do that but I mean can you put like a little like hey this has to be submitted on well it's a reminder it's a reminder mm -hmm. like a footnote or so in March you put submit annual work plan mm -hmm. or no, November rather than March it's the annual report yeah this year uh, actually in November see. December you know I think we do need to follow this and get get an annual plan together right fourth quarter yeah for 2020. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, in that way, you know, like if we, when we do have changes in the group, mm -hmm. that would still be there. And so people, I know I had asked Lisa, I, when T had left, I asked her if there was anything to do. And then she was in the middle of like a million things and then trying to find a replacement. And mm -hmm. it just kind of just got pushed aside or dropped or I don't know what happened. But but I think it would be helpful to have some kind of a reminder on our schedule. Um, one other just thought to, to consider sharing. Um, could there be a, like a mechanism to maybe solicit the community for um, presentations at this meeting as well too? That has been one, I think, really helpful thing that's happened um, pretty regularly is having presentations so we know what's happening. Um, I ended up talking to somebody, uh, nonprofit leader, and they, well, I'd love to be there. Just let me know when. So there's a lot of interest too. I don't know if we could maybe do a little social media call through the city's pages too um, but yeah especially tying into you know some of the um, like the monthly celebration in Black History Month International Women's History Month um, I think that's always kind of great but this is an, an, a good op opportunity to elevate some of the missions and activities already happening and inform <laughs> inform folks of the services um, so that, that might be another goal that I would maybe say is could there be a um, more fluid um, process to, to solicit and secure kind of a, a, a list of speakers to always have at this group. I even thought uh, just the people around the table have so much history that we don't always get to talk about um, your own organizations or affiliations. So um, if we don't have a formal presentation, I wonder if we could even take some of the knowledge already, <laughs> already at the table too. I know last year be, or the year before when I was um, before I was leaving the the city planning office, I sat down with um, Jared, or he's on, he's over at uh, Mart State now, mm. and uh, another one of the human relations uh, commissioner, I just can't have his name, but uh, and and we talked about having a. A, a black history program other than just Martin Luther King. Mm. You know, so, and I know Jared is always into uh, programs and stuff, and he'll probably have something uh, in a black history in February. So, I, you know, that would be a nice touch. Because when you talk about uh, Martin Luther King, <coughs> you, know, you talk about, uh, you know, uh, 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 equal, mm -hmm. you know, uh, everybody. Uh, his uh, his passion of uh, nonviolence and 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 equal among everybody, but in Black History Month, then you start talking about the uh, the things that uh, 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 African American did that I was unaware. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of um, the uh, the Blue ba Baby Syndrome? It was it was back in the, like when it had to do with uh, some kind of heart 
things, and the babies were dying, and and the uh, because when they get that syndrome, it had to do with the heart, and and it was a uh, a person that worked with a doctor specialist during the heart uh, during during this time who was black that found a cure to it itself, and and you know now that it's, it's you know it's. There's that, that syndrome is uh, they know how to correct it. All those other years, all the, the infants will, will pass. But just little things like that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, to, uh, there's so much out there other than just, you know, Martin Luther, mm -hmm. which, is, which, you know, which he is good, I mean, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I mean, we can even do that with some of the other uh, programs too, you know, I mean, if we, Wanted to look at you know the uh, the different heritage months, you know, or or the uh, LBG, you know, Pride Month and stuff. There's uh, there's so many things that we just kind of focus on the negative things, but what about the things that really help the community? I think. Well, even plasma, right? The person that discovered plasma was a black, and he ended up uh, uh, dying because the uh, the hospitals wouldn't take him in the emergency. And if he was emergency, and then if he would have got the plasma that he discovered, he would have lived. Wow. It, it was just you know, I mean, it's just things like that to just you know, I I know as a native, we are always looking at the true history of things. You know, not the John Wayne stuff. Well, that might be where, like, soliciting different groups out there during, you know, on, on the website or the city website or something, that would come in. I mean, we could focus more on right. this and just kind of select them based on what um, education or awareness it is for that month. Mm -hmm. Did we... Did we have like a? Did we have a present? Uh, somebody come in and present? So I feel like we watched like a video. Do you remember that way at the beginning? I don't oh, remember sure. what that was, but it was good. But I can't remember. It was like one of the first. Yeah. Meetings that we had. It could be something that's incorporated to the welcome new members. The um, the state Minnesota Human Rights Commission has a has a really great video that was created. Um, to be honest, I don't know who was appointed as their new commissioner. Um, Kevin Lindsay was the commissioner for many years, so I, I believe the um, our new governor and lieutenant governor have appointed a new commissioner. I'm not certain who that is, but the information is still really valid. Um, so that could be kind of a a kickoff, an annual. <laughs> right. I mean, I thought it was I thought it was very well. It was, it was helpful because it yeah it discussed you know that um, you know human rights is is a very broad topic and um, so I think that helped put it in context for people too to sort of frame the work that we we're doing too especially as reestablishing good memory <laughs> I just remember the video was really good that's yeah. why I was like um, that, is it possible with some of the information about um, our meeting times and um, uh, the mission of this commission, maybe that could be, if we wanted to create some sort of handout material or paperwork, it could include also like a solicitation for like, do you, you know, do you have a, a mission, an organization or um, work in our community that we should know about? It could maybe be twofold as sort of informing people um, that we exist and that we want to know about what they're doing. <laughs> I think that'd be great. Not as the only solution to that, but um, maybe we could engage with IT or something to even have a spot on um, the tab. There's so much information on our website, obviously, but maybe there could be a way similar to how um, um, like uh, council members are able to, you could just email a council member if you have a concern. Maybe we could tag in the same thing and it could inbox you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Josh, you're managing. If right. if we have somebody, we generally have you yep. coordinate them. Yep. So it's food for thought. I mean, it, you don't have to I do that, but um, to make it a little bit more accessible, so it's not just our own networks too. Right. 
I, when I was when I attended some of these welcoming week meetings, I had met Don Duncan mm -hmm. there, and she had talked about, you know, know, setting up a time to come in, and, and it would have been helpful to be like, oh, you can I think just I go here, contact Tia. But I mean, if you just said you can go on the website and it'll yeah, contact them and give them your information, that would be would be nice. Mm -hmm. Josh, do we need an action on this then? We do want to vote on it today. Is that's up to the group. Well, Nate pointed out we can amend things too, but. Well, if you'd like, I could take what's here and update it to 2019 and um, see if I incorporate some of the stuff we've talked about and then maybe at the next meeting it could be discussed. And then the March local partnerships and public relations, that would just be one you could um, that happened in March and then we sort of promoted it in April so maybe we could just remove that one or um, I know since the housing piece is required make sure that that's tagged in there somehow or at least noted that we need to identify some sort of um, outreach or community activity to fulfill that so that'd be my only suggestion to actually change it other than the date or dates from 2019, 2020 there as well. And I did uh, just today meet with um, Michelle who is from the High Plains Housing, Fair Housing. Um, they're up in Grand Forks, but they have done some work in the metro area here. And uh, she had said that if the commission ever wanted to partner on a fair housing training, something like that, they'd be interested in participating they provide trainings and they usually are pretty well attended she said and um, she was thinking that the metro area it's about time for it to have another yep. training of that nature I bet you could start circling around some dates now and <laughs> it's about far enough out to start planning So we don't need to, okay. I think we will take a, it's up to us, but I think we should see if there's a motion. Motion to hold it or, <laughs> or are we adopting it? I don't. Are there any motions? <laughs> Anybody have a motion? Let's see, I want to make sure we get this right. Um, <laughs> move that we adopt the, uh, 2018 work plan as the basis for 2019 work plan. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, so we will um, motion to adopt the 2018 <laughs> work plan as a as the basis for the next for 2018. Um, next item on the agenda is chair and vice chair discussion appointments to be made at the February meeting. I don't, I'm not sure. I just put that on there to okay. bring it to your attention to make sure that you guys are aware of it. I added the rules of practice so that people would see what it entails or just have a refresher. Uh, really just wanted to bring it to your attention that that's something that has to be done in February. Okay. Really noted. <laughs> well, are all our, our offices just for the one year at a time? Yes. Can I use this opportunity to just say thank you guys for serving as our first chair and co-chair or as our co chair and co-chair for this past year. Appreciate all of your efforts and showing up. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> yes. yes. You, did a, you did a great job. <laughs> I just, 
just sat and listened to you most of the time. Well, and filled in. But I also think, you know, since it's still fairly new, you know, that I know a lot of times when we started other uh, commission, we always, we always asked the person that was on that first chair to stay on one more year to help initiate mm -hmm. the program since we are still, you know, getting round it and, 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 and going yet. Mm -hmm. so, but that's something to look at for February, I guess, when we talk about it. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No? Reports, upcoming events, updates, news? <laughs> You're looking, you're looking at me. <laughs> no, I always look at you. <laughs> well, one thing we just decided to uh, put out, I think, on our um, blog is next Wednesday is Ed Roberts Day, and Ed was the founder of the Independent Living Movement. Mm -hmm. He started the first Center for Independent Living out in Berkeley, California in uh, the late 60s, and uh, now there are over 300 of us throughout the country, including... Freedom Resource Center, so he's kind of our founding father, I guess. Do you guys do something then? Or? Well, we're just going to publicize it a bit. That, that's about it. Is it on, it's on like Facebook and stuff? Well, I think so. Share it. Yeah, <laughs> go, go to our uh, Facebook site and like Freedom Resource Center. <laughs> <laughs> if I haven't already, I will. Okay. Um, I guess a few things looking ahead in the calendar. Um, I, I am excited about the Women's March being held on Saturday. So it's at uh, 1 o'clock of their speakers, 2.30 if you really want to get outside and cool off. <laughs> you can. There's a very small march, <laughs> but otherwise it's um, being held inside the, the Civic Center in Fargo. Um, and then also um, there's a lot of, uh, Martin Luther King Day was mentioned earlier, and there are a lot of opportunities to um, learn and celebrate so throughout the day um, con uh, MSUM just had a celebration last night uh, but uh, throughout the day uh, Concordia College has a lot of different um, presentations and speakers um, so if you go and look at their website you can find the full listing I don't I won't list it up because I don't know myself but a couple different panels a lot of different interactive things that you can do in your own time and then they end with um, a panel I think they combine a couple of the speakers and then um, uh, our friends across the river at the uh, Fargo Human Relations Commissions has their, um, they do their awards on MLK Day. So that's at 6.30 at the Fargo Theater. Um, and uh, I, I alluded it to it, but our, our new appointments are up for the year. For the year and so I um, have a little bit of change in, in um, my uh uh, for my lineup, so I'll be serving in the Arts and Culture Commission, and um, which I'm a little nervous about. Delray Williams has been the only one <laughs> to serve from the council since she started it. Uh, but uh, I plan to stay in touch with what you guys are doing, as I think there, there's room to overlap and uplift the work that you're doing. And come and visit with us. And tell I, us what I, you do. Yeah, I can come and <laughs> come and be in the audience occasionally. But uh, as mentioned, Deb White um, is was appointed, and um, if you don't know, she's uh, well. I think she's a pretty awesome lady, but she is a sociologist, so um, works at MSUM and um, incredibly intelligent and well-connected person. So I think um, she'll do a great job at bringing a different lens to um, what we do here at the HRC. So, yeah. Um, I anything I I don't I I did a um, for the uh, human North Dakota Human Rights Commission I did a um, I worked with the uh, the ego and the condor prophecies at uh, Dakota medical foundation I did the opening prayer and we talked about that and, they, and that they talked about the um, 
about the NODAPA, uh, the things that were happening down in uh, Standing Rock at the time. And the prophecy states that when the condor and the eagle meet, then it becomes a more environmental, spiritual part of uh, mm. working together of the two hemispheres of, uh, for the Mother Earth. So it was, uh, it was really interesting. I did the opening prayer and stuff, and then my brother uh, uh, did the, uh, the end of it. He's the uh, indigenous uh, teacher at uh, NDSU, Dr. Mike Wielbert. I don't have a doctor in front of me, so. <laughs> but but uh, it, was, it was really good. It was uh, well attended, and um, it was focused pretty much on the uh, the movement itself. Uh, it was actually, that movement in Odapa was actually started by uh, uh, high school students. And they went to their elders, and, uh, and that was because of the water. They're going to uh, put that um, the old pipes across the lake or the river and stuff. Um, they went to the elders, and they, the, the high school students themselves ran from, I think, from the Fort Chates all the way to Washington, D.C. Mm. You know, they mm -hmm. uh, ran that and stuff like that. And then it just got, uh, it just got really um, starting going. And it wasn't, we, they talked about the, uh, a lot of people talk about it was a, a native thing, but it wasn't. I mean, if, if you ever went down there, if, if you ever went to there when, when that was happening, You'll see all the, the different tribal flags, but you see all flags from all nations on this big uh, roadway from around the world, you know. And uh, and it was just a, it was really a, a a spiritual experience. The energy of it, of everybody, non, you know, uh, not only natives, non-natives, you know, uh, a traditional. Christians, you know, Hindu, Muslims, everybody uh, was all there, and it was it was really something. I have a little story about. I don't know if you guys, some of you guys know uh, Ellen Molly, right? Mm -hmm. Ellen Molly, uh, she uh, I adopted her into my family, so she's my sister, and then Dan is uh, my nephew, and uh, she went down there about four or five times mm. and stuff. I and I was sitting in my office one time. And I was, uh, she calls me when she was down there. And then she was on a, and, and Ellen is uh, Irish, you know, she's Irish. And she called me, she was standing on one of the hills. She said, I'm standing on this hill, looking at the whole campground, looking at everything. I can just feel the energy of, of life and, and of Mother Earth. And some horses went by and she said, and there's some horses with some young, uh, some riders on there. I should just catch one and jump and ride with them. <laughs> <laughs> and then so we talked a little bit. Then after I, she hung up, I called uh, Dan. I said, Dan, I think Ellen's going native on us. <laughs> 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 but it was it was it was so it was it was so it was so positive and stuff. And 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 the and, and the story I talked about this elder lady talking about. All this about the environment, all this about the corporation and about society. It was, it was the, uh, it was the uh, the children that started to spark. Hmm. Now it's us as adults to keep that flame uh, burning and uh, expand on it with uh, the cause and 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 uh, help with Mother Earth and the spiritual value of what has happened. So it was really interesting. I mean. Uh, it was a it was a good uh, program, and that's that was I, that's what I did on Sunday, and of course Saturday I was at the powwow, so You've been busy. I had a whole weekend full. <laughs> good thing you retired. <laughs> yeah, good thing I was retired exactly. So, but uh, yeah, that was that was something. Um, do we have any new business? I mean, we kind of covered all that. Mm, Thanks. So. We have a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make a motion to, uh, to adjourn the meeting, but I also want to thank uh, Sarah for uh, for.
for helping me get on there. Yeah. On here. <laughs> because I was, uh, I was from a different ward. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, put it, I put my hat in the ring and they threw my hat back out. <laughs> but she grabbed it and pulled it back in. <laughs> so uh, I, I thank you for that. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, so that's my emotion. And we'll miss you. And we'll miss and you. And your updates. And I'm gonna, <laughs> and I'm gonna take a cookie too. Take a cookie for the run. I will second the motion. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, hearing no, no opposing, we will adjourn the meeting. Have a good night.